Nidhogg is a 2D sword based sort of fighting game where landing one hit with your sword kills the opponent. I actually played it a while ago, so why didn't I think of it when I was making my recent video about 2D sword based sort of fighting games with one hit kills? In Nidhogg there are three main game states, each round starts in a neutral state, you just need to fight. If you kill the opponent it will be your turn to run. The map is long and made up of several segments, when it's your turn your goal is to run in one direction until you reach the end, jumping off the edge to be devoured by the mythical dragon Nidhogg in front of a baying crowd. While it is your turn, you can kill your opponent and they will respawn a few seconds later or you can run past them in which case they will magically reappear in the next segment of the map. If your opponent kills you or you fall to your death, you enter the third game state, the opponent's turn. Now you are the one who might be killed or run past only to respawn seconds later to try again to stop the enemy's advance. Swordplay reminds me of that in First Cut. You can lunge at the opponent and raising or lowering your sword to three different positions will block a lunge at the same height. Up close, moving your sword up or down can also disarm your opponent. These moments of fencing are when the game feels most like a fighting game to me. The dance in and out of stabbing range, the risk and reward trade-offs of split second decisions and reactions. But while Nidhogg's combat is one hit kill, it is not one hit win. Landing a hit means it is now your turn to run and gives you a couple of seconds to make progress unimpeded. If you lose the next standoff and the opponent makes more progress than you did, your earlier kill now means nothing. This separates Nidhogg from first cut, one strike and Sclash. In my previous video I talked about the stamina system of Sclash. Certain actions can increase or decrease your and your opponent's stamina bars and this can create an ebb and flow to matches that I didn't find in one strike or first cut. This means that Sclash removes the health bar but adds back something different that creates some of the same competitive narrative that a health bar can provide in normal fighting games, such as the possibility of gaining and then losing an advantage or making a comeback. The twist is that a player can choose to take a potentially risky move and attack at almost any point, ignoring the stamina system. They might be parried and punished or the hit might land an instant kill the round could be over in a second. As commenter Baines Mark II pointed out, Nidhogg's alternate take on the victory condition naturally creates the flow and story that I mentioned when talking about Sclash. Nidhogg lands somewhere in the middle. Like Sclash, it has a back and forth that doesn't come from a health bar. Like a traditional fighting game, the back and forth can't be entirely skipped. You need to make several breakthroughs against an opponent who has the opportunity to try and stop you. And uniquely out of those games, Nidhogg's back and forth can go on indefinitely, sometimes for several minutes. When played like a fighting game, Nidhogg is great. The controls feel very natural to me. The sword fights are tense and the range of options, including trying to stab the opponent, throwing your sword at them, sweeping or even dive kicking them, stop the encounters from feeling too samey. The one hit kill element gives it an approachable feeling that makes it a great party game. A newer player has a good chance of getting at least a couple of kills in against a more experienced opponent. But the length of the back and forth irons out some of the feeling of randomness that one hit games can have. But winning sword fights is not the only way to make progress in Nidhogg. When I first played the game, I didn't know what footsies was. I didn't have an intuition for the risk and reward trade-off of the combat options. I just saw some bastard with a sword standing in my way and I wanted to get past them, so I ran, I rolled, I jumped. I grew up playing Super Mario Bros. In that game, your goal is to overcome a series of bastards in your way and get to the end of the map. You can go slow, jump on your enemies, kick shells and get as many kills as you can to clear the stage of monsters and saunter up to that flagpole unopposed. But in my opinion, the most fun way to play is to fly through the level without stopping to give up momentum by jumping on a Goomba unnecessarily. In Mario, nearly all combat is optional and I like to skip it. In fighting games, combat is usually not optional and you wouldn't want to skip it, it's kind of the whole point. When I started playing Nidhogg, having never played fighting games seriously and loving 2D platformers, I saw it as a platformer and tried to play it that way, avoiding as much combat as I could, and that was fun for me. It was tense too. You can only treat the combat as optional when it's your turn. 
Once you get killed, you have to get a kill to win back the option to treat the game as a platformer again. It felt like a twist on Super Mario Bros, where dying turns you into a hammer bro, and you have to kill Mario to once again become him. You can't just memorise the map and run it on muscle memory like in Mario. Your opponent can take you by surprise. You have to concentrate and be unpredictable. It is possible to win other fighting games without fighting. I have won in Melty Blood without landing a hit through a timeout where my opponent had sacrificed some health. I have lost in Virtual Fighter 2 by accidentally jumping off the stage and ringing out myself. This kind of thing is possible in Soul Calibur as well. But those require some intent or a mistake from the loser. But in Nidhogg, fighting as little as possible can be a viable strategy, which is pretty rare in a game that can fairly be called a fighting game. I want to give a shout out to Eggnog Plus, which is explicitly inspired by Nidhogg and works similarly, except when you get to the end of the map you're not eaten by a dragon, but jump into a pool of... Eggnog, I guess? It's a lot of fun and you can name your price to get it from Itch, so you can get it for free, although I would suggest throwing the developer some money if you can afford to do so. It is local multiplayer only out of the box with no built in AI, but a fan has developed a mod, also available from Itch on a pay what you want basis, which turns it into a very playable single player experience, although as with all of these games it is designed to be played with a friend if you have any. Eggnog Plus also includes a karate mode where you spawn without swords and engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat, which is not one hit kill, as well as a sword skip brawl mode where the goal is to throw your sword into a vat of eggnog to score points in a first to seven. I like this, it's a fun different way to play the game but with all the same controls. It encourages you to get to grips with the mechanics in a different way. It's like Tekken Ball, it gives you a different way to have fun with the game while still improving your execution and your understanding of what your character can do. I'd like to see more fighting games include modes like this. Grief Helm is another game with a Nidhogg-like mode in it, this time with a more realistic medieval European knight aesthetic. It seems to lack the platforming elements of Nidhogg and Eggnog. The combat is not optional here. There's also Nidhogg 2, which adds different weapon types and changes the graphics to a divisive art style that feels to me like a blend between Oddworld and 80s monster claymation show The Trap door. But I haven't played Griefhelm or Nidhogg 2, so that's all I'm going to say about them.